What is good guys? Thank y'all for tuning back into the channel, man. If you're new, make sure you hit that sub button down below to be notified for every single video that I drop, man. Excuse that noise. They working on the roof this morning, man. But, as y'all can see by the title, seven types of people who will not be saved. Now, I don't know how I want to take this video. It's a 40 minute video. I'm going to put the link down, the, down below in the description for y'all to watch the whole video. I'm definitely not going to watch the whole thing. But um, we're just going to pick out some parts. We're going to talk about it. And we're going to see what it's about, man. Without further ado, let's just go ahead and get into this video. Panorama about divine love. While vast and unquestionable, God remains steadfast in his principles. Among Christians, it's widely believed that God's will encompasses everyone, regardless of gender, age, or ethnicity, longing for the salvation of each one. The Holy Scriptures confirm this in 1 Timothy chapter 4, proclaiming God's desire for all to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. But what happens to those who seem far from this salvation? In today's video, I will reveal seven profiles of people who may encounter obstacles on this spiritual path. I just want to say this, like, no matter where you are at in your life, no matter what you've been through, whatever the case may be, God still wants you to be saved. He still wants you to be filled with him. You know what I'm saying? So you're never too far from God. Don't let the devil get into your mind and say, man, I didn't sin too much. I'm way too deep. There's no way that God loves me. There's no way that God will accept me. He definitely will accept you. You just have to accept him. In other words, I will talk about seven types of people who may not achieve salvation. It's vital to pay attention. Many of us could be inadvertently under obstruction. Our path to redemption. Thus, remain vigilant and reflect. Does any of these profiles resonate with your spiritual journey? The answer could be key to a deeper understanding of the nature of divine love and salvation itself. I invite everyone to take a moment to watch this full video, participate in the prayers, and receive abundant blessings for you, your families, and friends. Before we dive into the heart of this content, I kindly ask you to show your support, like this video, subscribe to our channel, and share this essential message. Every action of yours helps to spread the gospel, reaching more hearts and strengthening the kingdom of God here on earth. Beloved faithful, we face an unsettling truth. Not everyone in this world can or will be saved. This reality is a warning, especially for those who attend church diligently. It is not just the presence at Sunday celebrations, active participation in the community, offering tithes, having a Christian title, speaking piously, or even baptism that guarantees salvation. The Bible, in Matthew chapter 7 verses 21 to 22, brings us Jesus' stern warning about the Day of Judgment. Many will believe they performed miracles in His name, but He will reject them, saying, I never knew you. Depart from me, you evildoers. This message is an invitation for each of us to reflect on our true position before the divine throne on Judgment Day. Ask yourselves, if the Lord returned today, would we be ready and worthy, clothed in His righteousness, spotless before Him? Contemplating this is not just important, it's essential for our spiritual journey. I want y'all guys to comment down below if you made it to this part of the video and put down why you think you'd be ready if God came if God came back today? Would you be ready if God came back today? Comment answer that question down below. Would you be ready? If you think you wouldn't be ready, comment down below why you think you wouldn't be ready. I would like to I would like to to hear from y'all, man. Just comment that down below. Feel blessed to be here participating in this video at such a crucial time. As 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 10 reminds us we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each may receive according to what he has done while in the body, whether good or bad. Now let's reflect on seven types of people who, according to scripture, cannot be saved. The first group is made up of unbelievers, but who are they? They are those who do not believe in the birth, death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe, man. According to the Bible, these people cannot achieve salvation. The only path to redemption is through faith in God. Without this belief, no one can be saved from sins and Satan's influence. There is no other way to achieve salvation except through faith in God and belief in His Son, Jesus Christ. 
The well-known passage in John 3 verse 16 highlights that God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Many may underestimate the simplicity of this redemption plan, and that's why unbelief is so dangerous. Secondly, God cannot save those who seek salvation through means other than Jesus Christ. Right. John 5 verse 40 states that some refused to come to Jesus to have life. He is the only way to the Father, and no one comes to the Father except through him. Acts 4 verse 12 tells us there is no other name given among men by which we must be saved except Jesus Christ. Nothing else can save a person, not intelligence, power, money, good looks, or even family or friends. We are saved only by the blood of Jesus and his death on the cross paid for our sins. So like, like a lot of y'all, y'all go to church and y'all think, oh man, I'm close with the pastor. Oh, I'm in the choir. Oh, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. But your heart got to be in the right place. It don't matter who you, who you close to. Even if it's your pastor, you know what I'm saying? Your own pastor can't save you. At the end of the day, you take the knowledge that you get in the church, you know what I'm saying? Take take the wisdom, you know what I'm saying? And apply it to your life, you know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, only God can save you, you know what I'm saying? Um, So we got to stop, you know, looking up to people that think that you think that, oh my God, this person is on a pedestal. He's way better than me, you know? But... I'm going to let y'all know, man, that, you know, God, you know, he puts a calling on our life and we got to take that serious, man. You know, as far as being a pastor, yet yeah, they have influence, uh, a lot of influence, but we got to make sure that we never trust man, but definitely trust God's message, man. Make sure we in this world, make sure we hearing the right thing, whatever the case may be, you know, make sure we closer to God than we are to a person. You know what I'm saying? The next category of people who, according to scripture, cannot be saved are the hypocrites. Jesus directly addressed these individuals in Matthew 23, verse 3. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees. I ain't gonna lie, that if you're gonna keep it 100, I, I'm a hypocrite sometimes. I really am. Sometimes I, I say things to people, you know what I'm saying, try to, you know, preach, whatever the case may be, and then I end up doing the same thing. Now, I am not perfect. A lot of people do this. But one thing I would never try to do is do something and think that I'm going to get away with it with God. You know what I'm saying? We come out of church. We come to church. We want to read the word. We want to hear about the word. and We act perfect in church as if we're not doing anything. As if we're not human. Get out of church. Act totally different. Of course we're not perfect. But if your main goal is to put on a fake image for church. Come out of church and be back to the person you are you probably can fool man but you can never fool God so let's make sure that we are not being hypocrites when it comes to God's word when it comes to treating people right you know what I'm saying and just make sure that we are trying to do the right thing of course you know what I'm saying we're gonna slip up we're gonna make mistakes and, and that's definitely okay but let's correct those you hypocrites you shut the kingdom of heaven in people's faces you yourselves do not enter nor will you let those enter who are trying to a hypocrite is someone who pretends to be what they are not yes on Sundays they present themselves in church with appropriate attire raising holy hands to God Yet on the weekends, they behave like anyone else in worldly... Guys, guys, did I just now say that? I just now said that. Listen up. ...settings. For them, salvation and the life of faith are mere formalities, treating the church as a social center without true devotion. These people may worship God publicly, but they do not allow the life of Christ to truly manifest in their actions and thoughts. Man, I'm not lying. They can spend years. I just sit here and told my son yesterday on the phone that what, he's five years old. I told him, whatever you learn in church, listen and apply it to your lifestyle outside of church because there's no way that you're going to get away with faking the funk outside of church. Be who God truly wants you to be. That I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not saying be perfect, but I'm saying do the best that you can. You know what I'm saying? Hold on, guys.
No problem. I'm back, guys. Let's get back into the video. Ears in the church, but do not show fruits that prove the faith they profess. They are at the kingdom's door, but do not enter and even prevent others from entering. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, verses 9 to 14, we find the story of a Pharisee who considered himself righteous and looked down on others. In contrast, Jesus praised the humble attitude of the tax collector who, aware of his sins... Oh, there's so much topics we can speak on. A lot of us, we go to church and we act like we're more holy than thou. We got to humble ourselves, man, because we're not going to church to be better than anybody else. We're not going to church to get on another level than somebody else. We're not going to church and getting closer to God to look down on other people. The main purpose, man, in this world is to love, uplift, elevate, walk towards God, bring other people up to know God, raise our children up to know God. It's a Bible in a verse. I can't say it word from word, but I know as a father, I'm supposed to raise my son in the right way to know God. That way, as he gets older, he will have. I'm plant, planting that seed in him right now, so that he can go forth <laughs> and do miracles, man. You know what I'm saying? And if I leave, I want to make sure that that plant, that seed is planted in him. You know what I'm saying? And to be humble, not to act like we are more better than anybody else just because we in our Bible more, we know God more, whatever the case may be. Because at the end of the day, we all. We all on the same level. It don't matter how much money or what status you got. We all on the same level. Pleaded for God's mercy. This narrative illustrates the biblical warning against self-justification. In Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9, we are reminded that salvation comes by grace through faith. And it is not something we can achieve or boast about. The fifth category of people who cannot be saved are the apostates. 2 Peter 2 verses 20 to 22 speaks clearly about them, saying if anyone, after knowing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, gets involved again with the world and is overcome, their final condition is worse than the first. This underscores the seriousness of turning away from the path of truth after having known it. These individuals find themselves in a worse situation in the end than at the beginning. It would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after knowing it to turn their backs on the sacred command that was delivered to them. It's as Proverbs describes, the dog returns to its vomit and the washed pig to wallowing in the mud. The Bible shows us the picture of those who become religious and abandon their corrupt and immoral practices, but who in the end reveal their true nature and return to them. A washed pig remains a pig. These are people who toy with the fundamentals of Christian beliefs, such as baptism, communion, and church attendance, but who eventually reveal their true selves, returning to the world and its temptations because, in reality, they never had faith. The next category of people the Bible says cannot be saved are the blasphemers. Jesus addresses this topic in Matthew chapter 12, verses 31 and 32 where he warns that every kind of sin and blasphemy can be forgiven, except for blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, neither in this age nor in the coming one. Some people blaspheme against God, mocking the Holy Spirit and belittling its manifestation. This is considered the unforgivable sin. Therefore, it is crucial to be careful about what is said about the Holy Spirit, Avoid jokes, associations, or groups that speak disparagingly about the movement of God's Spirit, as this can lead to the commission of this unforgivable sin. The last group of people that, according to the scriptures, God cannot save are those who have already died. It is common for many people to seek pastors and religious leaders asking for prayers during the funeral of a loved one. However, it is important to understand that no prayer can change a person's destiny after their death. Salvation is only possible while alive. After death, it becomes completely unreachable. The idea of a purgatory, as some believe, is not supported by the truth of God's word. Salvation is only possible in life, and that is why it is crucial to surrender your life to Jesus. You heard that right? Life is too short. 
I make sure every day that I ask God for forgiveness. Lord, repent. I repent of my sins, Lord. Forgive me for the for the sins that I don't know of, man. Life is so short, man. I always think about, like, if I died today, would I go to heaven? That's something to think about, guys. That's something to think about, guys. If y'all made it all the way to the end of this video, say, let's get ready. Comment down below, let's get ready. I know when somebody has watched the whole video because it has the time where somebody watches the whole video. Some people don't watch the whole video. And you just skip to the end of the video and put what I say. But I'm going to see the timestamp of when you watch the whole video. And if you don't, that's fine. Because these videos are to inspire, uplift, and motivate. You know what I'm saying? It's not about popularity. It's not about... Being the biggest YouTuber, whatever the case may be, I truly watch these videos to learn and to educate other people. That's one of my biggest um, dreams, man, is to encourage and uplift people, you know what I'm saying? And hopefully y'all learn something from this. And um, at the end of my videos, I always say stay inspired, stay motivated, stay grinding. Comment down below. Let's get ready. I'm out of here. Peace.